Hello everyone. In this class, we'll try to learn about hemostasis, that is nothing but arrest of bleeding. Before that, we'll try to learn about platelets. The normal platelet count is around 3 lakh cells per cubic millimeter of blood, and it can range from 2 to 5 lakhs. The lifespan of platelet is around 8 to 12 days. Site of formation is bone marrow, and these are the some of the stages of formation. As we know that it is derived from the pluripotent stem cells then it gets converted into committed stem cell and where they are going to produce uh, the platelet series is platelet series cells megakaryoblast then it forms pro megakaryocyte then granular megakaryocytes that leads to platelets and one megakaryocyte can give rise to 3000 platelets by frag fragmentation the site of destruction of this platelet is spleen and reticuloendothelial cells. So the functions of a platelet are, it plays a very important role in hemostasis in the formation of the platelet plug formation and it has a role in blood clotting providing the platform of phospholipid for coagulation cascade. It is important for clot retraction, uh, the protein which is present in the Platelet thrombocytin plays an important role in clot retraction. It has a slight phagocytic uh, action, so it, it engulfs microorganisms and it is important for storage and transport function as well. Coming to hemostasis, spontaneous arrest or stoppage of bleeding by forming clots in the walls of damaged vessels while maintaining the blood in a fluid state within the vascular system is called as hemostasis. It occurs in three stages. The first stage is vasoconstriction, second stage is platelet plug formation and third stage is coagulation of the blood that is conversion of platelet plug into the definitive hemostatic clot. These are the three stages occurs when there is any injury to the wall. First one is vasoconstriction, second one is temporary hemostatic platelet plug formation and third one is definitive hemostatic clot and vasoconstriction occurs because of the mechanical injury as well as the release of serotonin and other vasoconstriction and uh, the temporary hemostatic plug occurs, be occurs because of the uh, when the collagen is exposed and platelets are adhered to the uh, damaged vessels by one bilobin factor and there will be release of ADP and thromboxin A2 which activate more number of platelets and which causes aggregation and further adhesion of platelets to the uh, with each other and then and uh, the damaged vessel wall also it is going to uh, initiate the activation of coagulation through the intrinsic pathway whereas release of thromboplastins uh, it activates the coagulation system by activating the extrinsic mechanism where they form the fibrin uh, mesh, mesh network which uh, will be able to form definitive hemostatic plug. Mechanism of hemostasis, vasoconstriction. Following an injury, the first event that takes place in hemostatic mechanism is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction occurs due to the local myogenic spasm and vasoconstrictor agents released by the traumatized tissues and platelets and nervous reflexes. Platelet plug formation. When blood vessel is injured, platelets adhere to the exposed uh, collagen and one bilobin factor. Binding produces platelet activation which releases the contents of their granules. The released ADP acts on ADP receptors in the platelet membranes to produce further accumulation of more platelets, so which is called as platelet aggregation. Aggregation also facilitated by the platelet activating factors which are secreted by neutrophils, monocytes and platelets. Platelet aggregation causes the production of arachidonic acid derivatives like thromboxin A2 and prostacyclin. Thromboxin A2 further increases platelet aggregation and helps in the formation of the temporary hemostatic plug. Thromboxin A2 causes release of norepinephrine and uh, serotonin that is 5-HT which are vasoconstrictor agents. Prostacyclin inhibits 
thromboxin A2 and prevents further platelet aggregation and which is going to keep the, uh, the function of the platelet plug uh, to the local uh, tissue where there is an injury. Administration of aspirin in low, dose, low, doses, low dosage shifts the balance towards the prostacyclin by inhibiting the thromboxin A2 and inhibits the platelet aggregation. So thus the aspirin in low doses prevents myocardial infarction and stroke. Those are vascular accidents. Coagulation of the blood. It is a physiochemical change by which the liquid blood is converted into jelly-like mass called clot. Substances necessary for clotting are called clotting factors. The process of coagulation uh, or clotting of the blood occurs in three stages. The first stage is formation of the prothrombin activator, second stage is conversion of prothrombin into thrombin and third stage is conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. These are the circulating coagulating factors to name by the Roman numericals they have been uh, given classified into 13 clotting factors. Factor 1 is fibrinogen, 2 is prothrombin, 3 is thromboplastin, 4 is calcium, 5 is proaxillin, 7 is proconvertin, 8 is antihemophilic factor, 9 is a plasma thromboplastic component or also called as Christmas factor, 10 is toward power factor, 11th is uh, uh, plasma thromboplastin antecedent, 12th is Hegman factor and 13th is fibrin stabilizing factor. The prothrombin activator is formed by two ways. One is intrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway is triggered when blood is exposed uh, to the subendothelial collagen tissue resulting in the formation of intrinsic prothrombin activator. It occurs when there is a trauma to the blood vessels. It occurs in vivo that is inside in the body and in vitro in the test tube. The factor 12 comes in contact with the subendothelial collagen tissue and is converted to activated factor 12 and this reaction is catalyzed by high molecular weight kinonogen and calicrin. The active factor 12 then activates the factor 11 uh, and active factor 9 uh, active factor 11 activates the factor 9. The factor 8 is activated when it is separated from one equilibrium factor. Now activated factors 9 and 8 along with phospholipids calcium activates factor 10. In the presence of tissue phospholipids calcium and factor 5 activated factor 10 catalyzes the conversion of prothrombin into thrombin. Note activated 10 plus uh, activated 5 plus platelet phospholipid together form prothrombin activator. Extrinsic pathway injury to the extravascular tissue and blood vessel causes release of substance called tissue thromboplastin which is a complex of phospholipid and protein. Uh, it is released from the injured tissue, injured tissue which activates the factor 7 uh, to activated factor 7. It occurs in vivo only inside the body only. The tissue thromboplastin and factor 7 activates factor 9 and 10. Ultimately activated factor 10 catalyzes the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin in presence of tissue phospholipids, calcium and activated factor 5. The last part of the pathway that is from the activated, uh, activated uh, factor 10 onwards is a common for both. Conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Now thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin monomer. Fibrin monomer then polymerizes to form loosely arranged strands of fibrin that is a soft soluble clot. Later loose strands are modified into dense and tight aggregate that is insoluble and elastic fibrin clot and later the, the later reaction is catalyzed by the activated factor 13 and calcium. So this is the chart which is showing 
intrinsic me uh, mechanism and extrinsic mechanism of coagulation when the collagen is uh, uh, subendothelial collagen is exposed uh, the factor 12 gets activated under the influence of high molecular weight kinogen and calcarin then uh, it, it is going to activate the factor 11 the activated factor 11 converts inactivated factor 9 into activated 9 and uh, then the factor 8 is released by the van Willebrand factor uh, that is going to activated 8 is going to help in the conversion of the inactive 10 into active uh, 10 factor and activated 5 factor calcium uh, is going to uh, form the prothrombin converting enzyme which is going to convert prothrombin into thrombin whereas in an extrinsic system uh, there will be release of a tissue uh, thromboplastin that is factor 3 which is going to convert the inactive factor 7 into active factor 7 and this factor 7 is going to convert uh, inactive 9 factor into active 9 sometimes it is going to also help in the conversion of inactive 9 into active 9 as well all these reactions they involve uh, they require calcium except for the first two reactions of intrinsic mechanism otherwise the rest of all the coagulation uh, reaction they require calcium so in the next next step the the fibrinogen gets converted into fibrin in the presence of thrombin and these fibrin threads uh, the monomers they get polymerized they will be stabilized by the active factor uh, 13 and which is uh, they're going to form the meshwork of uh, the fibrin threads and ultimately forms the uh, the, the uh, firm secondary plated plug these are some of the actions of thrombin thrombin helps in the conversion of inactive factor uh, 5 into active factor 5 then 8 as well as 13 whereas the active factor 5 it further helps in the conversion of uh, the prothrombin into thrombin so thus it acts as a positive feedback mechanism for the formation of our more generation of the thrombin the thrombin has other effects as well it, it acts as a fibrinolytic system where it is going to uh, convert inactivated protein c into activated protein c uh, which is a potent vaso uh, potent fibrinolytic or potent anticoagulant <coughs> going to clot clot retraction after formation the blood clot starts contracting it contracts down to 40 percent of its original volume within 5 to 30 minutes a straw colored fluid oozes out this straw colored fluid is called as serum the compact clot is more effective hemostatic plug platelet entrapped in the clot continue to release procoagulant substances for example fibrin stabilizing factor which causes more and more cross-linking bonds between adjacent fibrin fibers. Platelet themselves contribute directly to clot retraction by activating platelet thrombocinin, actin and myosin. Actions of calcium. The calcium accelerates the conversion of uh, inactive 10 to active 10 and uh, inactive 7 to active 7 the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin requires calcium the conversion of soft soluble fibrin clot to firm insoluble clot is catalyzed by the calcium but calcium deficiencies do not produce coagulation disorder, disorders because only traces of calcium are required for coagulation some of the limiting reactions of coagulation cascade that which uh, uh, the 
prevent they are important for a prevention of intravascular thrombosis and these reaction going to maintain the blood in fluid state some of these reactions include uh, the antithrombin which is a circulating protease inhibitor it inhibits the active forms of factor 9 10 11 and 12 and the platelet aggregating effect of thromboxin a2 is balanced by anti aggregating effects of prostacyclines which causes clots to form at the site when a blood vessel is injured but keeps the vessel lumen free of clot heparin a naturally occurring anticoagulant facilitates the action of antithrombin 3 the removal of activated clotting factors occurs by the liver the smoothness of the endothelium that is uh, done by the glycocalyx prevents the platelet adhesion and extension of the clot into the blood vessels negatively charged particles present over the endothelial lining repel the clotting factors and continuous movement of blood does not allow the clot formation and simultaneous activation of the fibrolytic system along with the clotting mechanism is going to maintain the uh, the the blood in the fluid state this is in brief about the coagulation system thank you